Hey students, welcome to another Mr. Ness screencast and the last screencast of this unit. In this video, you're going to learn about two competing theories of something called cultural ecology. And here are your objectives for the video. Note that the last objective is your opinion, but you need to be ready to defend your choice. So pause the video look these questions over and get ready to copy some vocab and take some notes. Today we're going to look at the last theme of human geography interaction and interaction means interaction between humans and their environment and another word for that is cultural ecology. Cultural ecology is the study of the interaction between a group's culture and its physical environment. Here is the main question in cultural ecology. How does the physical environment that a group of people lives in impact what those people do and believe? In other words, how does the people's environment shape their culture? Now you're gonna learn about two contrasting theories of cultural ecology. Each theory answers this question in its own way. The first theory is called environmental determinism. Environmental determinism argues that a group's culture is greatly shaped by its environment. In other words, the environment plays a significant role. And this theory goes beyond culture as well, looking to explain the ways that environmental factors like land or climate have impacted events in history or even modern day geopolitics. The other theory is called possibilism, possibilism. Possibilism says that culture is mostly shaped by people, not by the environment. Possibilism does not totally discount environmental factors, but it celebrates the ability of mankind to respond to and overcome these factors in unique ways. Here's a quote that I found that I like that sums up possibilism. The environment does not dictate what people would become, but rather the environment offers the opportunities for people to choose what to be. To think about these two theories, imagine that we measured the impact of the environment on culture as a spectrum. On one end of the spectrum over here, the environment shapes everything. Humans have no free will. On the other end over here, the environment plays no role and humans are completely in charge of their destiny. Followers of environmental determinism aren't exactly all the way to the left, but they're closer to the left side than to the right. Followers of possibilism aren't all the way to the right, but they're closer to the right than to the left. So this debate is really over the extent to which the environment impacts humans. Now let's look at some evidence for each theory. In his book, Guns, Germs, and Steel, which looks at the role that geography played in the rise and fall of world powers, the geographer Jared Diamond notes that all of the European countries that colonized the New World bordered the Atlantic Ocean. Okay, that's these countries here. Diamond argues that their access to the ocean and their history of maritime trading was an important reason why those countries took over the New World and other countries did not. Indeed, no landlocked European countries had any colonies in the New World. Now let's look at some evidence for possibilism. The development of agriculture, also called the Neolithic Revolution, occurred independently at different times in different parts of the world and in vastly different environments. In dry regions like Egypt, humans invented irrigation techniques. In wet areas like southern China, humans cultivated rice in wet flooded fields. And in mountainous regions like Peru, humans used terraced fields to grow their crops. 
Possibilists will claim that this shows the inventiveness of humans to overcome their environment in order to meet their needs. The last thing I want to talk about is the common accusation that environmental determinism is racist. While arguing that the environment is important is not necessarily racist, it is true that environmental determinism has a long history tied up with racism. That's because when white Europeans enslaved Africans and took over the lands of non-white people all around the world, they used environmental determinism as a justification for why they, the white people, were better than the non-white people they were subjugating. Here is Thomas Jefferson, move my face out of the way. Here's Jefferson writing in the early 1800s. Tropical climates encourage laziness, relaxed attitudes, promiscuity, and generally degenerative societies. The tropical climates he's referring to are those non-white places like Africa, where his slaves had been taken from. So here, he's essentially saying that black people are lazy and degenerate because they come from places where the weather is too warm. And here is Hitler expressing the same idea a hundred years later. Variability in the weather of the middle and northern latitudes, that means Europe, leads to stronger work ethics and civilized societies. So, according to him, white people are civilized and strong because they come from cool climates. These ideas are junk, but they were taken up by scientists to support racist ideologies, whether that meant enslavement, colonization, or genocide. Okay, I want you to go back over what you just learned. Review the objectives and think about which of these two theories makes more sense to you. There is evidence for both of them. Be ready to defend your answer in class using that evidence. Tune in next time and I will see you in class. Bye students.